Hi, Misha here. And, uh, needed a milled gun. It's kind of a control, a comparison for a different unrelated video to this one. And since it's one of my favorites, decided to bring the Bulgarian Sam 7 SF out again. <laughs> Run a few mags through it and whatnot. And there's been a lot of interest in this gun lately because you can't get them right now. Since 2013, they've been pretty consistently available on the market. Maybe with small gaps here and there, but pretty much available from the summer of 2013 until the beginning of 2019. And I'm not saying they didn't sell, but a lot of people put off buying one. It's kind of interesting why we do this when it comes to collectible guns or imports or even good shooter guns. How we tend to undervalue, underappreciate guns while they're here, but then when they disappear, people people who did not buy these when they were thirteen hundred, thirteen fifty are now willing and happy to pay several hundred dollars more. I've had, you know, on Gunbroker they've gone for seventeen, eighteen hundred, even two thousand and up. So why is that? That would just talk a little bit about this gun and about collecting in general and arsenal in general. Just because, you know, we have AK content around here. But before I ramble a bit more, let's run a few more mags to this gun and we'll come back to the table after that. Sam 7SF. Sam 7SF. You don't have to take all those ejected spent casings out on my truck just because I take them out on you. As reliable as always, I haven't put a huge number of rounds to this gun, but I did pick one up as soon as they came out in 2013. And um, we've had it to the range more than a couple of times. I can't ever remember a failure. They are very smooth shooting, very light shooting guns. But as you notice, mine is wearing a little different furniture. Because I've tried to make mine into an ARM9F clone. And it doesn't need much to get there. Now the ARM9F is one of Arsenal ADs. Circle 10, Bulgaria's current modern production assault rifles that is sold to the militaries. In fact, they've sold some to the U.S. to give to allies. They also had a large order from the UAE recently, in recent years, as well as supplying them to their own Bulgarian army. They offer these in 7.6239, as the SAM-7 SF is here. And they also offer them in 5.56 NATO. Well, with this being my clone gun, up here we have an as-imported example, untouched. You'll see it has the same metal stock. It has the left side 
safety selector. This is really what makes the ARM9 series. Galil style selector. You'll notice the pistol grip is a little different. This is the one it comes with. It's a little wider and flatter on the sides compared to this here, the original. I personally prefer the feel of the original. It's just a little more rounded a little more evenly balanced. But a pistol grip is easy to change. Notice it has the fully rotating sling swivel. Scope rail on the side. You can rotate the swivel 360. Sometimes when you're having to put a scope on it can get in the way but it really shouldn't if you're using a mil spec mount. This typically comes with, the, well typically this comes with the usual Bulgarian green military two-point sling. For mine I have the modern black nylon sling with kind of the buckle and adjustment here. This is what I'd like to think of as the Bulgarian paratrooper sling. Not really sure it is. It's just the first time I ever saw one. It came with a old SAS M7A1. Moving forward, mine has the Bulgarian 30 round waffle mag. These are well respected in the AK community. They're polymer, but they have full metal framework and lugs. The only real downsides, because of the ribbing patterns, they can be tight in some magwells. Milled magwells like this tend to be a little more forgiving. Also, of course, cost. They're about 40 bucks new. When you buy a SAM 7SF from the factory, it just comes with this short 10 round mag. Not a bad mag, reliable. The reason they do is because of uh, import and all that, and to make them more acceptable in different states. Moving forward, the handguards. When you buy these, they have typical black polymer handguards, Russian Bulgarian style. Heat shield in the lower, typical upper. I put mil spec AR M9 handguards on mine. Same basic material, including the heat shield. But the size is a little different. They flare out more towards the rear. They're skinny in the front. They really work well with the rest of the furniture. This pistol grip. And for whatever reason, the way they have you grip the front of the gun, it doesn't make this stock feel quite as long. I'm not a tall person, and it doesn't really feel awkward to me. So I replace the handguards. Now you'll notice under the barrel there's no cleaning rod. And this is how they ship. Notice mine has a cleaning rod. But every gun when new, if I can grab it here, comes with this. A two-piece cleaning rod and a little bag. And you get this, everyone who buys these new does, so it's not like yours didn't come with it. It's in the box, so if it didn't fall out. The long piece fits under your barrel, and the short piece actually goes in one of the pockets in your uh, Bulgarian mag pouch. It's in the front right pocket. There is a little, little tall skinny pocket for that piece. The reason is the latch mechanism for the stock is actually a little bit up front here. And so if the cleaning rod was long enough to do the whole barrel, it would go too deep into the receiver and interrupt the latch. They also wanted it long enough to be able to be used with the muzzle device. And that's the last major change I did. As from the factory, these come with a standard AK-74 muzzle brake. 
a very effective muzzle brake to be sure it's on 24 millimeter threads I put what's known as the Bulgarian egg beater flash rider on this is typically what you see on the ARM9 and ARM9F series but it is a true flash hider whereas this is a muzzle brake again in some states that matters this does come from the factory with the bayonet lug here and the accessory lug back here typical adjustable iron sights we have a typical smooth top cover it's a little bit thicker than usual we have a true Bulgarian hot die forged milled receiver and we have a true 16 and a quarter inch cold hammer forge and chrome lined barrel now some people say these are star barrels that's kind of a misreading of the website a little bit they're not from Steyr when Bulgaria was updating their machinery in the 90s early 2000s whenever they purchased new hammer forging equipment a setup whatever from Steyr so these are created using Steyr technology no, very good barrels. <laughs> and again, we have a metal, relatively lightweight, still metal, side folding buttstock. And it has a thin rubber butt plate. Not so much to reduce recoil, but what I like about it, since the stock is pretty thin in the back, this rubber gives a real good grippy surface for your shoulder. Keeps it from sliding off. Early versions of the AR M9F stock like this were just a, a flat metal butt plate with uh, ribbing. And they did slide around a little more. So it's a more recent addition to the design. But in my opinion, a good one. Well, let's, uh, let's, you know, shoot a little bit more. Then we'll talk about kind of the modern market that we live in at the beginning of 2020. Ram 7 SF. Sam 7 SF. As I've said in other videos, when the Sam 7 SF started to be imported in 2013, it wasn't the first time we had a semi auto ARM 9F. In fact, it wasn't the first time we had a semi auto ARM 9F from Arsenal. They actually did a limited production series back in 2004-2005, around 400 guns, known as the SA Space M-7 SF, that were assembled in Las Vegas, Nevada, using receivers that were technically American-made, although the forgings seem to have come from Bulgaria. And then the rest of the parts were from a unissued, brand new, just imported Bulgarian parts kit, including the barrel. And those guns came with this style of flash rider. They also had the early style buttstock, at least the ones I saw, without the rubber thing. And interestingly, some had this modern style of latch with the extended catch. 
You can see it here on this one how it sticks out from the edge, making it easy to pop open. You just press in. Da -da -da. See, this springs open. Springs because back here there's this giving pressure. But also some are made with more of the traditional AKS 74 style where the latch was inside here and you would reach in and pop it that way. So a few little variations. So those were available back in the day but they were always very expensive. The SF, SFC, and SFKs from that time period were quite pricey. When the imports came out they were actually cheaper. And at the time, I owned one of the SFs built here. I actually sold it and got this exact gun here. The guy was happy to get the American made one, and I was happy to get the import. I like the imports because these are true factory guns. But that's part of their detraction for some people because. They have the military kind of spray paint, you know, paint finish. Now it is over phosphating. It's kind of over a gray, coarse phosphating. This is a very matte finish, not very attractive physically. It's literally utilitarian finish, and it can wear, especially when you use certain solvents on it. Whereas the American guns were had a shinier deeper, glossier finish. There was more attractive looking and frankly more durable. But, you know, it was an improvement on the mil spec. It wasn't the mil spec. Likewise, the American ones were fitted together by hand singly, which meant they were just a little bit nicer, straighter, better. Whereas the import, SAM 7 SF, is an assembly line gun. Now, the Arsenal assembly line has very good quality, but it's going to have assembly line attention to detail versus gunsmith hand fitted assembly. So, just a different level. Me, myself, and I, I like the assembly line type. I want a gun as close to military as possible. I also want a gun that's not so perfect looking and so special that I'm afraid to go out and shoot it. I like a gun that I can have fun with. That's just me. Your mileage may vary. So with the, the import guns, you may see a machine mark here or there, inside or outside of the mill receiver. And sometimes the inside parts, like the bolt, bolt carrier, might need to wear in a bit. And recently I've noticed this concerns some people. Some threads have been posted in the AK files. The way the Kalashnikov system works is it does fit itself together. So sometimes when parts aren't perfectly fitted, or there's a burr or something, there will be some initial wearing in. But it will almost always stop, and with a properly made gun, it will stop. Obviously, if you see a wear spot keep on growing after, say, 500 rounds, that might be a cause for concern. But otherwise, it's just typical break-in, because these are machines. And that kind of gets to the thing. Today... People can't get these, and today Arsenal is a bit of a victim of its own marketing. I think people... I mean, Arsenals are definitely high-end AKs. But that doesn't mean they're perfect, especially on the cosmetic front. And this is a topic I could carry on with for a whole video, so I'm just going to kind of hit the highlights. But my point is, you might get... A rivet that's not perfect. You might get some wear upon shooting. You might get a finish that has a few scuffs and scrapes. This is all within mil spec. You might even get gasp, a front sight that's not perfectly vertical. 
I know, I know. But that's within mil spec. That's the whole reason these sights can be adjusted. In fact, mine is actually the front side is adjusted over to the right a little bit, meaning that it probably is a little bit canted to the left. I mean, within military spec, of course. But when you buy an arsenal, you're buying a military gun, not a work of art. It really is just about learning the Kalashnikov. And for those of us who are into it, accepting its warts is, is kind of part of it. That's part of its charm. This was always meant to be a hand-fitted gun, and any time you have humans putting a gun together, you know, there's going to be signs of that. These, like I said, were imported in 2013, and when they came in as initial sporters, all the ones I've seen have had 2000 dated, or excuse me, 2013 dated receivers. You'll see, uh, you know, AC or BE or whatever, and then followed by 53. Arsenal date system starts in 1960. Meaning 53 is 2013. What Arsenal Incorporated Las Vegas did, they imported a large number of sporter guns, 2013-2014. And they converted them over time, a few hundred at a time, as the U.S. parts and conversion parts were available, so on and so forth. Finally, at the beginning of last year, 2019, they ran out of guns from that batch. Now they claim that more SAM-7 SS will be available this spring. This will be a new batch, presumably 2020 dated, maybe 2019, but depending on when they're made. The thing is, the existing old guns, people like to complain about the arsenal pricing because of prices on Gunbroker. But the thing is, for one thing, that's K-Bar selling them. And for another, they start them off at a penny. It's the market that drives them up. Their dealer price has remained remarkably stable ever since these came out in 2013. In fact, I paid the same money for this gun in 2013 that I paid for my last guns at SHOT Show 2019. But that was based on the original price of the Sporters imported back then. The new batch of Sporters will cost Arsenal more. That cost will get conveyed to the customer. Plus, yes, the price that things have been going for on Gunbroker will probably convince them to price them higher. So while these might come back this year, don't expect them to go and be 1300 again. What will the price be? I don't know. But not 1300 Because they're asking 1100 on their website for the SAM, excuse me, the SLR-107R, their base model gun. So with their base model fixed stock stamped gun at 1100 kind of their deluxe Ambi safety side folding gun on their premier milled receiver is not going to be three hundred dollars or two hundred dollars more. Minimum, I would guess, and this is just totally a guess, fourteen fifty to sixteen fifty retail price on the new batch of Sam Seven SFs. Just a guess. And of course, when that happens, you also get people, and this is something I've noticed that people are starting to do these days that they did not used to do with AKs. Back when AKs were, of course, cheaper, they literally go over AKs, checking out all the internal surfaces and even external ones with a magnifier glass. When you're looking for imperfections, when you're looking for potential issues, when you're that up on it, 
you are very, very likely to find something. Now, it's usually something that's actually nothing, but if you look hard enough, you can usually find something with any mechanical thing, not just guns. I just want people to have realistic expectations of what they're going to get with an arsenal. These are very reliable. They're very durable. And when I tell people when they ask about shooting them out, replacing barrels, so on and so forth, if you can afford to shoot most any gun out, but especially like an arsenal, you can afford to replace it because the cost of ammo to shoot one of these out is thousands upon thousands, probably tens upon tens of thousands of dollars. So if you really put that many rounds through one, yeah, yeah replacing it's not going to thing. Now these have not been banned, they have not been sanctioned, so there's no reason these cannot come in again. And I would honestly say if you get one, shoot it. That's what they're meant for. I haven't noticed major devaluing of a gun if it's been shot and cared for versus kept brand new, untouched in the box. In fact, sometimes guns kept in the box, bad things happen to them. You know, moisture gets in there, or rodents start to chew the box and get in. Yeah, at least a gun when you're shooting it, taking it out of the safe or the vault, shooting it, cleaning it, whatnot, you, you watch. So if rust starts to form, if something starts to happen, you'll notice it. But if you put a gun in the box, don't check on it for two years, and presumably it's safe, but you don't know. And by that point, if rust started to form for whatever reason, it very well might be quite advanced. I definitely say if you're getting one of these, buy it, shoot it, because... You know, in my opinion, what's the point of owning something if you don't enjoy it? But, like I said, needed to take one of these out to the range anyway for another project. And uh, with recent activities and discussions about these, I thought this would be kind of a good time to do a retrospective. I really do think these are good guns. They're amongst the best AKs ever imported. Again, it is a true milled receiver it's not one of those kind of fake mill guns like you know the the century guns where they claim that they're milled but they're actually a cast block that's quote unquote machined in the final shape and just look at past import histories with milled stuff we haven't had many we've had the Valmets M62s and later M76s and we've had the Chinese most famously, the Polytech Legend, but also some of the Mac 90s that came in post band with milled receivers. And other than those, we had a small number of milled Zastava Yugoslavian guns brought over by Mitchells. That's it. Most AKs we've received have been stamped guns, and those milds that have come over have all gone quite popular in the collector's market. And Arsenal has been at the forefront of milled since the very first SA-93s and SLR-95s. Because Arsenal Bulgaria, when everyone else switched to stamped receivers, kept on using the milled for the most part. Yes, they did stamped AK-74s, but when it came to their 7.6239 guns and 5.56, they really stuck with the milled. They felt that was best. So they're really the way to go. Probably the best milled AK receivers made in the world in 2020. Mostly because everyone else has stopped. But also because they really are very good quality. So if you're checking one of these out. I definitely say it's a good gun. And you won't regret it. Especially if you're a shooter. Prices on Gunbroker are what they are. What I would pay is really irrelevant. It's what you're comfortable with. Just know what you're getting. You are getting something very tough, dependable. But you may not get something that is physically, cosmetically, 100% perfect, if you know what I mean. There might be internal parts that wear in. There might be a slight cant to the front sight. There might be 
some paint rubs. And the paint finish, as you saw in these two, is utilitarian. It does a good job of protecting from rust. I would also say, when you go to clean these, try to find a cleaner that's not too caustic on paint materials. Because I've seen some guys own these and clean them literally a hundred times and barely wear on the paint. Other guys will start stripping the paint off on their third or fourth cleaning. And a lot of it has to do with just the particular cleaner they're using. So that might be something to be concerned with as well. And just, you know, pick one that's not known for stripping paint. But even if the paint comes off, again, there is a phosphate layer under it. So, you know, you're not completely without protection. Well, with that said, I'm going to call it a night, guys. I appreciate you tuning in with me. And I hope this kind of retrospective on one of my favorite guns was enjoyable. If you'd like to know more, check out the playlist. We've got an entire one for Bulgarian AKs. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And I'm sure we will revisit this again after the next batch comes in, if it comes in. As far as Bulgaria sending guns over here, as far as Arsenal AD sending guns over for Arsenal Incorporated. I don't really know anything more than you do. What I, you know, anything I might say would just be speculation, and I try to be factual here. So, that's all I'm going to say. Now, my private channel, I might give a little more opinion-oriented stuff, so if you can check that out. I might do a kind of a companion video to this one over there. Alrighty, guys. If you could, please like, share, and subscribe. Feel free to comment. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha. Also on behalf of Jay, we will catch you very soon next time.